What's going on everybody? It's Kevin with Custom Night Vision. Uh, today we're going to be discussing the various applications for thermal and night vision optics. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail on the specifics of each device, but we do want to talk about the specific advantages of the different systems. This video is intended to educate the potential customer or end user and aid in a better understanding of the advantages and limitations of each system. On the table in front of me, I've got uh, several options. These are just going to serve as reference for larger product categories. But to get started, I'm gonna talk a, a little bit about the advantages or the reason you would employ one of these systems. To get started, I'm gonna talk about kind of a helmet mounted night vision system, something that you might see someone using in a tactical or hunting application. Uh, first and foremost, these amplify light. They take in photons from the environment, they amplify that and they project it through this lens via a phosphor screen into your eye providing a usable image. Uh, it's a very cool technology, it's basically magic. They have low to no latency or any latency that you can perceive with your human eye. Basically that means that there is no delay between what's happening real time and what you see in the back of the night vision device. Uh, another kind of cool aspect of night vision that may not be talked about very much is night vision has very good battery life. It, it has very little battery consumption um, they are typically lightweight. These housings are getting lighter weight all the time. They, in my opinion, they are the best for navigation. Um, you can see all of the features and terrain around you. Uh, so when you're driving or walking through, you know, somewhere you may not be familiar with a field, the woods, you will be able to see everything like it is daytime. Night vision typically provides the best situational awareness uh, from you know the different kind of electro optics we're talking about. The only uh, pitfall of you know traditional image intensification based night vision is it's not going to detect heat signatures like thermal. And with that, I'm going to transition over to talking about the advantages of thermal optics. Thermal optics detect heat differentials, so these are ideally intended to detect heat signatures, be that threats or animals that you may be hunting. They do include a um, moderate latency in what you see through the optic and what's actually happening in front of it. For the most part, it's not, it's not going to keep you from making shots or if you happen to be using one for navigation, it's not going to impair you really from walking around but they do uh, consume batteries at a pretty high rate. So whereas with your traditional night vision systems, you can get away with, you know, at a minimum using one battery for an entire night of hunting or operating or whatever it is that you're doing with these. With night vision or with thermal optics, you're typically gonna be using a larger battery or several batteries and you can expect in optimal conditions battery life between six and eight hours. Uh, obviously that's going to depend on the system, the optic that you choose and how you're using it. But this is something to be aware of when you're looking at thermal optics. Something that people are not aware of with thermal based optics, you can't see through glass. And the reason that's important is because if you're using this in a patrol application, you're hunting, you can't necessarily use them to drive unless you have a side-by-side -side that allows you to fold the windshield forward or you're looking exclusively out of a side window of a vehicle. All you're going to see when looking through that glass is essentially just a white screen because it's detecting the temperature of the glass, not what's beyond it. Night vision does offer you the ability to see through glass so you can use these for navigating in vehicles driving you know anything that you would um anything that has a windshield <laughs> you can use with night vision those are kind of some of the big differences that set them apart within these two families there are you know different styles of application as well 
What we have right here, these are the Envision Halo line optics. This is the Halo X50. It's a really great rifle mounted thermal. This would be mounted on a dedicated rifle. You zero it, you leave it on there and you use this to hunt at night. Um, this is the Halo XRF. This is very similar as far as the lens is the same, the core is the same. It does a lot of the same things. It has internal recording. Again, not in trying to get into the nitty gritty of each one of these, but I'm just kind of giving you an overview. The difference between these two optics, this one includes a laser rangefinder. So I found that really helpful in my experience of using thermal optics to hunt because when you look through a thermal, it typically has a uh, native magnification of some factor. These two happen to be three and a half X. That being said, it's hard to range a target with your eye when you're looking through an optic that's already magnified to a certain level. And then that's displayed on a, a square LED screen in front of your eye. So having a laser rangefinder, especially with using calibers that, uh, you know, being aware of your ballistic performance comes into play like 300 blackout, 762 by 39. It's good to use this laser rangefinder and get an idea of exactly how far that target is away. And then you can use the reticle inside of it to ensure that you're getting good effect on your target. Moving on down, this optic is another InVision optic. This is the Nox 18. This one is designed to be helmet mounted or um, weapon mounted. It's got a very small profile. It's very lightweight. Uh, basically what this offers is a 1x thermal image. So you're gonna get a little bit better situational awareness, if you will, because you've got a wider field of view. You can transition from helmet mounted to weapon mounted, but for the most part, people mount these on helmets and they use them for detection, tracking, coming into open areas and scanning. That's how these typically get used. It's great however you want to use it. I actually use a Nox 35. I don't have one of those on the table. It's kind of um, a stopgap between these two. So it can still be helmet mounted, but it's got a little higher magnification and a larger lens. So it's going to get a little bit better detection at extended ranges. But suffice to say, these are all great options and they all kind of have their place as far as how you plan to use these optics to achieve whatever you're trying to achieve. This setup right here is a bridge that combines night vision and thermal. So this would be my preferred application. Um, combining night vision and thermal really is the best for most people. You're getting all of the advantages of both systems while mini minimizing the limitations of each by combining them. You've got thermal detection over one eye and night vision image intensification over the other. So you're getting good situational awareness, a real time view of all of the more specific details of things around you while being able to differentiate potential targets based on their heat signature. There are actually several different ways to get this kind of system or employ this kind of system, be it, you know, night vision and thermal combined. There is a bridge using two different optics. There are different systems on the market now that are Cody based clip on thermal imaging. And essentially what that is, is that is a small thermal device that clips onto your pre-existing night vision and it displays a thermal image into your image intensification tube. So it essentially overlays the thermal image onto your night vision. Very cool option. Uh, some of these are, are priced well enough where they, they kind of fit a segment in the market where if somebody already has night vision and they don't necessarily want to spend six, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars on a standalone thermal optic, they can spend a little bit less on this and it kind of gives them the best of both worlds. They don't have to run a bridge. There's limitations to bridges. Uh, dedicated binocular night vision is great by itself and adding the thermal capability to that kind of really checks a lot of boxes for me. But again, both are great options. Um, something I don't have on the table is it's becoming more readily available, but the thermal overlay like the L3 systems where they have binocular night vision systems like this with thermal image sensors, 
built inside of them and it actually overlays it inside of the the goggle for you those are obviously exorbitantly expensive but they are finding their way onto the market solely that is a technology that will become more readily available as time goes on so it is worth considering um, but at any rate we have all these options in stock we can build you out really any kind of setup that you want so if you're interested in this kind of thing or you want some more specific information on any of these particular options feel free to contact us uh, right now we've got a lot of these mh25s in stock these are very popular this is a great option as far as it, it does a little bit of everything i want to talk a little bit about this just for a second because it is such a cool product this little thermal device I'll take it off the bridge so you can get an idea of just how small it is This little thermal device can be used weapon mounted as a dedicated thermal optic. It can be helmet mounted or it can be used as a clip on. I have recently been using this in front of an EOTech one to 10 on a 16 inch rifle and it's been working as good as my Knox 35. The image quality is a little bit, I'm not gonna say it's better or worse, it's different. I tell people all the time that are shopping for InVision and iRay and they're trying to kind of decide which one they want to go with. It, it comes down to personal pe preference. The color palette is different inside of the actual screen inside here. So it looks different to different eyes. But at any rate, this device really fits the need of a customer that may not want to build an independent rifle dedicated to thermal hunting because it can be clipped on in front of a day optic. It can be used in front of a 1X RDS or holographic sight. It can be used in front of an ACOG, uh, one to six. Like I was saying earlier, I use it in front of a one to 10. They say that the kind of the sweet spot in magnification is four to six, but I can say that even at 10X, this still looks really good. You do have a small thermal sensor, so you're not getting as much detection or detection as far away as something like this with a 50 millimeter sensor, but you are still getting really good performance and a really good image. So go to our website, check these out. If you have any questions, you know, contact us via social media, email us, give us a call. We'd love to help you out. Appreciate your time. Like, share, subscribe. Y'all have a great day. Thanks.